So, this is these are architectures for object detection. So, we have already seen a recognition task right, where, uh, where you have something like uh, let me just open uh, ok. So, so for example, right we have seen that uh, you now you can do a recognition or what we call as a classification task right, where, where, where you have for the for the entire image you have one label right. So, you say that you know whether 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 right this image contains a tiger or whether it contains what it contains. Then the even next level is when you want to classify. So, this is like like a classification problem. Then the next one right that you can escalate it is by saying that you know classify plus is a localize right which basically means that you know you also have to put a this one a bounding box right around the object of interest. Then the next thing right that you might ask is what is called a detection object this one a detection which is what which is what uh, which is what is of you know interest to us today. And here what it will mean is that uh, is that you know you know not just one object that you could have actually multiple objects some of them could be same for example, you could have two dogs right within the same, but then you need a bounding box around each one of them and you also want to be able to tell what they are right. So, you see, you see you have multiple boxes plus labels plus labels ok and uh, then right you can go further up where you can have a, you know uh, this one a segmentation ok where it is not just a bounding box right you do a pixel level sort of as you know a segmentation and uh, this itself you can actually escalate it further it is what we saw as semantic segmentation right this is what we call a semantic segmentation where where you know instead of instead of label for the entire object right we are doing label at actually a pixel level and this is semantic segmentation then then there are then there are further improvements over this you know so what is called instance segmentation then a panoptic segmentation and all that okay no our 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 interest is here object detection okay and uh, a traditional approaches right that have been around i mean you know uh, of course you know these have sort of now these are not so important anymore right given the fact that so much has happened with the use of uh, deep networks Right, and traditional approaches typically will be like you know one of the one of the famous ones is actually what is called you know Viola Jones. Okay, this is uh, a Haar wavelet based kind of you know a detector works very well for actually faces. It can also do for humans and so on, but actually very works very well for faces. Then in fact you can also use your SIFT in a particular way in order to be able to do object detection. Then you can do HOG histogram of you know, uh, this one oriented gradients. So all of this is possible. But then these are all still very sort of you know what you call handcrafted and uh, you know and they have issues in terms of robustness and all of that. And therefore, the, the even trend right in a sense has been in the last 10 years or so right the trend in yeah, mostly maybe in the last uh, in fact 7, 8 years has been to, to use actually deep networks for this task of uh, this one, uh, you know object detection. Now, one of the ways right you know in which you can think about it is suppose suppose I have an image and I have some objects right some lying here some lying here ok there could be many for that matter. But thing is right if you the problem is right we do not know where those objects are right it could be that you know it does not have anything of interest or it could be that it has objects of interest but then we do not know where they are. Therefore, one way right which is also a traditional way right to do is for example, use what is called a sliding window. Right. So, what that will mean is you know keep a sliding window keep on examining what is happening under it and then right I mean somewhere when the sliding window right encompasses this object at that time right you will know that I mean you know right that there is something interesting out there and then you could say that well you know there is there is a, there is a particular object class there and then maybe right when the when the window comes here right you could have you could have a same sort of you know situation and so on. But all of this is too is too slow I mean you cannot take a window and then go all all over town right to find trying to figure out you know where is my object of interest. Therefore, it deep networks have taken sort of a different approach and uh, there is a, there is a, there is a set of three papers right, that came almost from the same set of authors. So, these are called RCNN fast RCNN and faster RCNN. Okay, and uh, these are all they have that R because these are all like region convolutional networks in the sense that right they do not go through the sliding window based approach. One of the key things that they do is generate what are called what are called uh, what are called actually proposals. 
uh, a proposals which basically means that you know given an image a proposal would mean that something that is likely of interest and, uh, and uh, let me also tell that right I am not going to write much because everything is available okay I am going to only you know explain basically how these things work and uh, this uh, in this particular lecture right we are not going to be focusing too much on feature map sizes and all that right it is the philosophy that that is more important the network details and all are available okay what what you want to uh, what I would like you to understand more is in terms of how these things work okay and uh, so this so the idea is to idea is to sort of flag in a sense right regions that are that could see potentially be of interest it does not mean that every region proposal will have an object under it but then, but then these are region proposals in the sense that these are proposals that are likely to be interesting that are likely to contain an object of interest it does not tell which object it is the region proposal is not there to tell what is the object it only tells that uh, no here is a region of interest and then and then you can have a subsequent network right which can which can work on those regions alone on 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 those regions that have been flagged as proposals and it could just act on those and these proposals are typically rectangular shaped boxes and they can come in various sizes and various shapes by shapes i mean something could be tall some could be square some could be flat and elongated whatever right and uh, and uh, the idea is that the, these rectangular boxes can then be plugged out because these are actually these each one of them is a kind of a potential proposal and therefore can be sent through a network in order to find out if it actually contains anything of interest okay that way you cut down on time in a big way but still this is still not the fastest but then right that's the idea okay so now the first network that came is is called you know rcnn right i mean you know which sort of created waves and that is that is the one here okay now if you see right how does it work so for example see there is a proposal stage a region this one a proposal stage which basically means that right this is something okay which is supposed to flag like i said which are all these which are all the interesting regions in my image now this is not a part of part of rcnn this is this is a module that comes from outside this is not does not does not something that you can train for this network okay this is not trainable okay it comes from outside and in the and in the sense right the way it works is you know there is a, there is actually there is something called a selective search which is actually a module okay which came this is actually a paper in ijcv 2015 okay and those authors right uh, this is more a kind of a traditional approach where you kind of generate what are called super pixels based upon color texture whatever right shading commonality whatever right when I mean, you want to call shape size right based upon all those all those things right what you do is given an image right you try to so for example right, I mean, you know so here is an example so what it will do is you know so it will try to try to merge so you have seen what is sub pixel right this is just the opposite way you go to what are called super pixels that means you actually merge pixels that kind of seem to actually look alike right and uh, and the idea is not to go into the selective search algorithm but selective search algorithm is something that can actually that can identify blobs or regions right that 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 it thinks could all be these pixels that have something in common the commonality could be in terms of like a side size color texture shape whatever it is right and uh, based upon that right this the selective search will flag and uh, it's not needed it's all there in the paper okay if you go to the paper you will find all this information but the key thing is to understand right, how this thing works so this uh, region proposal stage is something which will actually flag flag regions of interest and typically right, given an image it actually out, outputs of the order of two, 2k proposals that means it is about say 2000 you might wonder you know is not kind of 2000 a large number actually it is not so large compared to doing something like a sliding window imagine if you had a 500 cross 400 image and if you did a sliding window at, at every location looking at 500 to 400 that many that many proposals right compared to the 2000 is still a very small number and these proposals come in various shapes okay they are not uniform okay some could be square some could be rectangle some could be like this but they are all actually rectangles of different shapes and sizes okay now all these come now the problem is what happens is right now the rcnn what it uses as a backbone is actually is actually an say alexnet okay now the the alex uh, so the the idea is that right i mean this is actually uh, you know a pre trained right this is an alexnet pre trained on let's say the uh, you know typically you know it's pre trained which are on your imagenet database which has say 1000 classes and then actually a million images and all that which we have seen before now what it is trying to do is and in fact this is also the reason why this work is work is one of the most important ones because this is the first one to show that you can use a pre-trained network which was meant for a different task for example right alexnet can never localize right it can only tell you know whether it can only give you a label for the image 
right? It does not tell where that object is, it does not know anything about localization. But this was the very first work to actually take up a pre trained network, something like an AlexNet, which is which has a very good feature representation. Again, why do we pick AlexNet? Because that, that has been trained on millions of images for, of course, a classification problem, which is typically a thousand object class, thousand class, you know, sort of a classification problem. But then it has learnt a representation which is very strong. What they do is you know they actually, so what they what these people do is they do a fine tuning on top of that because, because their classes right could be something else right because it does not mean that you know whatever is there in image right is what is your class of interest. So, what you have to do is right you will have you will have a bunch of classes right that you that you are interested in ok. So, let us say right you got you know n number of object classes which is which is your data set and and and, uh, and right you want to kind of you know build this RCNN for your data set. And, and and you and you want to be able to localize right where those objects are inside an image. Now what it will do is you know if you have n number of object classes, it will it will create a vector which is n plus one. One is for the background, okay. So n is for the object classes. One class is for the background. So now what it will do is this uh, this this output layer right where you where uh, where the where the final layer for the output classification will come right. That thousand class thing that you had in AlexNet is replaced by this guy, which is simply an n plus n plus 1 kind of a class and the and the you know entire thing is trained. But to train one of the things that we realize is that a CNN right along with the AlexNet along with the fully connected network at all expects a fixed size input right which is typically 227 cross actually right to no 227. That is why that is why you have a warping stage here a warping function. Now, from here onwards actually the whole thing is RCNN by the way, but then the region proposal stage is really an outside module which is being invoked. Right. So, this is coming from outside which is being invoked and then you have an affine image warping which will actually take all these like I said right, these proposals could be of different shapes, it will warp them all to the same same right 227 cross 227 which is what which is what the AlexNet can take as input and then and then right all of this will go all the way and then what happens right. So, for the time being ignore this whole part ok, ignore ignore this entire part and just kind of see right look at what is happening here right on this arm. So, on this arm right what is happening is you have one network right that is being independently trained, trained with respect to this you see n plus n plus 1 object classes. Now, one of the things right that I have to mention is that when you when you want to train right. So, the batch size is actually 128 ok. So, the batch size is uh, actually 128 out of which so it means that which means that uh, these boxes right that you have you have actually 128 of them ok in every batch size I mean so you got like you see 2000 boxes with you right. So, one batch size is like you see 128 of them and out of which right 32 are supposed to be the, the I mean uh, no supposed to be positive and the whatever the right rest of them right and uh, ok mm, 32 ok 128 uh, then what is this 96 huh. So, 96 these numbers you can probably right check in the paper, but then the idea is this. Now, negative and and let us say right a positive right what do we actually what do we actually actually right mean by that. Now, you know that you know that right given my image what do you know for example, if I have an object somewhere right then I know that know that there is a ground truth bounding box for that right which I know correct because this and all is completely supervised. Right. So, so one of the things right which I know is that this is that right around and this annotation somebody has done. Okay, so, for example, if you if you take if you if you take up if you take you know a data set that is meant for this kind of a detection problem right then you will have these annotated data sets and what they will have is actually a ground truth bounding box right, which will typically hug the object closely right as closely as possible. So, that so that it is nice it nicely sits inside and then you will have a you will have a bounding box for some other object you will have a bounding box for some other object and then you also know the label of that object. Okay, now, when these when you when you when when you have a proposal network right which is trying to you know which is trying to bounce off all these proposals. So, so what it might have done is right about this point also when it found something interesting right I mean, you know it would have sent right one proposal like this another proposal like that another proposal like that right, it would have sent so many of them. Now, when you say that when you say that there are there is a certain number of these positive sort of you know a proposal right what you really mean is that the bounding box right that you have for those right you know for for those uh, for those examples these bounding boxes are such that if you compute their intersection over union with the corresponding ground truth box sitting there right i mean you know, around that region you will get uh, you'll get at least an iou which is i think greater than greater than uh, greater than 0.5 do you follow this so what it is saying is that 
what it is saying is that so for example if I have a ground truth box and then I have flagged a proposal here a bunch of proposals I will take each one of them find the IOU right with respect to that only if it is greater than 0.5 then I know that probably right this this case proposal could imply this ground truth object okay in which case I also have a label for that then and I also know that this ground truth box is for a, is for a particular label right and and uh, and therefore right you could have several such objects and some of those CC proposals could also come from the same object 32 positive does not mean 32 different objects okay 32 positive proposals that means that you could have multiple proposals coming from the same object you could have multiple proposals coming from the same object sitting right in let us say various different places does not matter okay now that is what you send as a batch uh, right and that is your batch and then what you are doing is you are actually training this this uh, kind of this kind of you know a classifier where again right I mean you know, you know basically right what is the so so every example goes in for which you know that the that the output vector should be this one hot vector because I know that right it should be it should have this label and therefore right you will say that you will say that for this bounding box right this should be the object label okay that is how you would train it. Now this does not take care of the fact that whether your bounding box is hugging the, uh, the, the ground truth box very closely or something it only means that it has a it has a good IOU beyond that right it does not say much okay. Now, uh, the now this entire thing is actually fine tuned okay. what that means is you do not really you know, you know churn the entire weights and all you just you just use a very slow learning rate so that it, it adapts to your to this to this object class right that you have and once that training gets over then what is done is the step following that is something like uh, is something like learning a classifier now. Now this is not the way you would typically do the you know, deep network right typically you like we always you know whenever we argued about a deep network we always used to argue that it should be end to end the features and the classifier should be should be together. So that right uh, for that classifier we know which are the most ideal features to learn this has been our slogan but in this case right, that is not the way it happens okay there is also its weakness. So what it does is now once this whole thing is trained right then what it will do is after the so so just before the uh, before the final output layer right the fully connected layer that you have i think it's a 404096d right uh, now that is that is the dimension feature that you get now what it will do is it will pass all so once the training is over right then then it will take every image for which it has about you know uh, 2000 of these uh, proposals but then right it will it will again you know pick those that have a good iou okay only those proposals now what it will do is i mean you know what it will do is it will actually pass them through this network so as to be able to get actually feature maps for for each one of them now that the training is over and what it will do is it will take all these feature maps and then now it will try to learn you know uh, right uh, this one uh, support vector machines right which are these SVMs. So, the support vector vector machines are kind of sitting outside and what it is doing is it is doing one versus rest. So, it is like saying if you have n object classes you will have in fact in this case it is n plus 1 right. So, you will have like you know you will have basically that many SVMs. So, for one SVM you train it for one object class the second SVM you train for the second object class. So, what this means is that when you pass examples right or feature maps to this for training. So, what you would do is it will be like you know one one against the rest. So the so the one will be will be of course you know certainly the you know certainly will consist of those proposals that come from that object right that you know, but then the ones which are actually negative are not simply the background everything else is a negative, even other objects are actually right negative, okay so 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 right which then means that which then means that right when you when you want these negative proposals you just look at look at all those IOUs right which have a value less than 0 0.3 right with respect to these proposals which are positive you take you take right all of them to be actually to be to be to be those proposals that can be considered to be the rest of the category. So, each SVM is learned is learned like that it is like one versus the rest one versus the rest right and that is how you learn the these so that is why we call them class specific SVMs right. So, each SVM is trained for one object class. Now, this is actually a lot of work right if you think about it I mean you have to store all these feature maps right each one is 4096 dimensional you have got 2000 proposals per image you got probably right you know 10000 images or something. So, you have to store all this to train the SVM so which means that there is a lot of memory that you need during training at least during training you need all of that you need to store them somewhere pull them out right train the SVM. Now, and then the bounding box right we are still not done because the bounding box right could still not be hugging the actual ground truth box very well right. So, what is done is then you train you train actually you know actually a separate uh, separate right I mean you know this one uh, sort of uh, this one a regression uh, uh, this one a network right whose job is to simply take in uh, so right this is supposed to be a 4D vector by by 4D right what we mean is if you have a bounding box right. So, what they typically do is take the corner coordinate and then and then uh, here the height and the width let us say four unknowns 
therefore the ground truth box right we know has a corner coordinate and then has a particular width and a height and therefore what you do is so 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 that four dimensional vector is what is what uh, you will use an l2 loss so you will say that this bounding box which i have which i have got and of course you know there is something called actually a non maxima suppression also that happens right which which we have seen earlier where was i huh. so so we wanted to we want to make sure that the bounding box right you know is is learned well okay and and uh, no i was i was talking about this nms right non maxima suppression so this non maxima see what can happen is you know so once you have a bounding box right i mean you know you can i mean around around an object proposal you could have several bounding boxes right all of which all of which it could look like could like could look like you know a potential potential box but then around one object if you put four boxes right it won't look nice right therefore what you do is you do what is called a what is called a non maxima suppression by non maxima suppression what you mean is that among the boxes right that are trying to among among these boxes that are kind of say right trying to trying to flag a particular ground truth label you pick the one which has the which has the which has the highest iou and then what you do is you find the iou of this box with respect to the others and whichever has an iou with respect to this box which is greater than 0.5 you remove all of them which very means means that right that they are all very close to each other right all those all those proposal boxes which seem to be also right flagging the same object you kind of you take the you take that intersection over union with respect to the box that has a maximum iou and then if they have a number greater than 0.5 right you throw them all out okay that is that is how you do this non maxima suppression which means that finally right typically you will be left with only only one box there okay against that object because otherwise right it, it won't look nice if you put right two three boxes right around an object and and then the box itself right the actual where the box should be lying the coordinates of the box so that when you actually fit it when I mean it should fit very well on the uh, you know on the object itself that means that with respect to the ground truth box you have to do some kind of a regression and that actually right i mean that kind of a regression happens here so 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 really speaking right it has got it has got four different things there is a proposal thing which is coming from somewhere then there is one network which is being trained you know independently which is for the for these classes uh, then then it has and has svms which are then right coming in and then they are getting trained and of course you know we are not even looking at what is the best feature for these svms right whatever we learn okay from the from the network we throw them as feature maps into the svm which is not which is not the which is not the most ideal thing to do and then finally you have another network right which is actually which is actually doing this bounding box regression but rcnn was still was still way ahead of the uh, right ahead of the rest in the game right at that time i think this is 2014 or something or 2014 right and uh, therefore it caught a caught caught the caught the attention of people the main complaint was that it's very slow it takes about 47 seconds for one image of course you know in those days with traditional approaches also it was very common to run into seconds therefore it probably didn't matter so much but then right people started thinking you know why should it be why should why should it take why should you have a network that it takes so long to do to do this you know object detection now let me show you some of these outputs so right this is how you get your rps region proposals and then right here is where here is what i meant okay for with respect to that network right that actually does the does the classification so so right so basically here is where so right here is where I mean your final uh, okay now here is where you have a detection class labels and uh, right here is where you have your final output layer that will that will have the number of classes that you want and then this 4096 and 4096 is standard right I mean you know that is already there in your in our you know alexnet the rest of it is all actually alexnet only okay and uh, then then if you look at it right so so in this case right what it has flagged are you know some of those boxes are being shown and uh, because it expects a constant uh, size input right so each one of them will have to be warped right so you can see that you know this warping is actually not not really a good thing to do but then right because of the fact that you are using an alexnet you are using fully connected layers all the way to the end therefore right, you are forced to input input a certain size right that means you have to warp right so, so each one of these will get warped right through the warped region and then and then right this is what will happen if you do not do non maxima suppression and after you not do a do a non maxima suppression right you will get a get a kind of say bounding box around the object of interest and then and then right you can also have have a class label i mean you can of course you have the class label along with along with a score right which tells uh, which tells how sure it is right about about that particular object so here it's a dog right and then there it's a ball and so on okay now one of the one of the one of, one of the things right that uh, that that i said right really slows down right right the rcnn okay is really really this point that uh, that that you have to actually generate these feature maps one thing is right it's not end to end right because you are actually training svm separately 
you have a classifier right which is being which is being trained you know sort of separately the feature maps are coming from somewhere and then and then of course the bounding box itself is again you know being done separately and so on therefore right it's not really really the most ideal way to actually set up a network and then the second thing right that you want to actually look at is the fact that the amount of this one right like i said you have to store so many feature maps and all of that right so so the same set of authors right they came up with what is called the fast rcnn same set in the sense that at least one or two people were common i don't know whether all the authors are common whatever right you can you can check that up no what do you think right what do you think right you would have done i mean okay suppose suppose i don't show this right now suppose suppose i tell you right what would be the way out suppose i ask you right what would you do I mean, right if you wanted to if you wanted to come out of this mess if you did not want to sort of uh, okay the I mean, region proposals it's assumed they are still coming from coming from somewhere okay now after that right the way the way the way right see look at the look at the number of times is the i mean cnn is invoked right in this case every this one a proposal comes you have to send it through the cnn you have to get a feature map if another proposal send it through the cnn get the feature map right it's like doing so many times instead of that what else right could we have done that could have kind of shortened this whole thing what i'm saying is the way right you are actually extracting the feature map can you do can you do something there what would you do there is one one smart thing that you have to do no what i'm saying is instead of having to pass every proposal through the convolutional network to get a feature map is there a better way to given a proposal can i access the feature map in some other way that's what the fast rcn does okay so it's like this right okay let me let me show you know uh, you know a picture like this yeah right this is actually better see here is my image okay and then and then right and then of course this is my selective search which is an which is an outside module right as i said which is which is flagging in in of these region proposals something here right i mean you know something here and all right it is flagged now earlier right what were we doing right i mean you know we were sort of you know training training each one of these proposals warping them right pushing them through the cnn to kind of get the feature map but if you really think about it right if you if you take if you take let's say of course you know in this case they they actually changed right alexnet to actually you know a vgg net now if you actually look at look at the look at the max pool layer right before the before the fully connected layers okay if you take the vgg net and look at the last max pool layer right before the before the fully connected layers begin you will have actually a convolutional feature map right i mean after that it's all the it's all the fully connected feature map which is what we used earlier but now just just step backwards a little bit and then you have the fully connected uh, sorry not fully connected the uh, you have a convolutional feature map what is the, what is the advantage with respect to a convolutional feature map in the convolutional feature map right if i if i if i if i pick a point in the convolutional feature map i can tell exactly from which part of the image it has come because because there is an operation that i have done no i have come in a particular way i can always right go back go back that way to trace from where it came with a with a with a fully connected layer you cannot do this because right everything comes in and therefore at the whole image you are looking at the whole image there is nothing like a locality but the moment you talk about a convolutional feature map i can actually trace things backwards now if you think about it right this convolutional feature map has has all the information right because because i have taken the entire image right on the left i have taken the entire image and then for this i have i have a i have a convolutional feature map right which is this whole whatever volume that i have now if you if you give me a proposal here i can actually find out which is that which is that volume that is sitting inside this which actually maps to that region correct you guys get this okay right that's the key in the sense that you know it's already there i mean you know so you don't have to go elsewhere to kind of look for where is that feature map that 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 feature map is sitting as a right a cuboid a cuboid right cube is all sides equal i always get confused so it's actually a cuboid right so it's, it's a cuboid and this and this cuboid is is what is what is the feature map right with respect to with respect to that region proposal and and if you pick another region proposal the shape of this cuboid can change in the sense that it's uh, the depth cannot change but then the size right uh, the kind of whatever the uh, i mean uh, i mean if you think about it, right a 2d a 2d side that you see right other than the depth that shape can change because what will happen is your region proposals are not of the same shape you have sometimes sometimes a rectangle that's longish you have sometimes you know a rectangle that's like this sometimes you have a square therefore if you try to locate where that the, where that cuboid is the cuboid shape can continuously keep changing depending upon your see a region proposal what do you do then if that is a problem what what is the standard thing that we have learnt if we have if we run into some trouble like that what would we do 
we did something very recently. Eh? Eh? Did I not talk about SPP, spatial pyramid pooling? What did we do there, right? What is what is the motivation for that? Right? We said that if I have feature maps, right, and uh, and you know and and basically right, I mean if, and then and then this is what I talked about last time, right? If you have an input size, whose size keeps on changing, even if you have a convolutional network, right? The output size will keep on changing. But then, if you want everything to boil down to one size, you do what is called spatial SPP, right? That means you basically divide the divide this into a fixed number of regions. If you have a larger image, right, you will still have a four cross four. If you have a smaller image, you will still have four cross four regions. Except that in the larger guy, the each block will be will be larger. In a, in a smaller image, each block will be smaller. That's all. But then at the end of the day, you do a max pooling, max pooling on each of those blocks. You get like you know one value, one value, and then you get actually sixteen values. Whether you have a large image, whether you have a smaller image, it doesn't matter. Right? That's the idea behind behind a pyramid pooling. But then we call it a pyramid pooling because you have you know different. Like we saw last time, right? We had sixteen, then we had eight, then we had four, then we had two, then we had one. Right? But you can you can have this on a pyramid. Now this is a special case. They call it as as ROI pooling. This is a spatial pyramid pooling. You can think of it as SPP, but with then with a single with a single pyramid level. I mean, you don't have you don't have multiple levels. So what they will do is you know so this so this volume that you have right, they'll squash it, squash it all of them into into basically one one fixed size, which you can do. Right? It's exactly the same idea. Okay, if it is of a different size, it doesn't matter. So so for example, right, I mean, if I had if I had one cuboid right, which was like this, okay. Okay, and then and then and then right, if I had another cuboid which is smaller, okay, then what I, I mean in both cases, right? If I if I'm going to if I'm going to say that this should be divided into let's say three cross three, this should also be divided into three cross three. That's done, right? So 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 now I don't have to worry about worry about the size and all, right? That's exactly the exactly this ROI this one pooling. So that at the at the end of the ROI, I mean, I'm not looking at, I'm not going to go through the dimensions and all. Those are all available. The key idea is that, right? Because that that's one problem that you'll encounter. You will know where the feature maps are, but then you will not know how do I handle now because because after that I got fully connected layers, right? Which means that everything should go to that in a fixed size, right? I cannot I cannot change my size anymore. But then that you can actually fix, right? Irrespective of which whatever be the shape of the RP, which which is a region proposal, then. Then they then they have a nice thing. The other nice thing about this is right after that it has got two sibling layers, right? Two sibling layers in the sense that one one does a classification, another 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 you know would do would do a bounding box bounding box kind of you know a regression. That means you have only one loss. There is one loss, one which is a cross entropy loss. That is for the that is for the object classification plus plus a bounding box regression. This is simply that four cross one sort of a, you know a vector. Whereas right this is again those kind of say labels and so on. And again, right, even here you need to say NMS and all of that, right? Because you can still get too many proposals coming around the same thing. But then, the, but then the key idea is this, right? The very, very key idea is that the, the you don't have to store all this, learn a separate SVM, learn a different class. Everything can be done end to end, except that this guy is still is still is still something that's coming from outside. You don't have a network that, that can actually flag them for you. It's coming from somewhere. That's okay. But then it's a smart move, right? All that. See the nice thing about these things. When you look back, right, at that time, probably, right, it didn't occur to many. But if you think about it, you know, it looks like yeah, I mean, uh, probably it's the ob most obvious thing to to do, perhaps, right. But at that time, look at it, right. There's only a few, a few people that could actually think about it. That's why I always, worked. and then finally it's all over, right. I mean, otherwise, do you think that this is such a great idea that right, one of us could not have, could not have kind of, right, you know, applied our head. It's not, right. What is it? It's not something, fun, you know, so out of the earth thing. Exactly, this is the kind of thing pooling. Well. We know how that happens, right? We know all that we need is where to go for the feature map. I mean, it's all sitting there, and somebody had to see it. Hmm. Yeah, all of these, all of these, where you are doing this fine tuning. Well, uh, no, that's why. That's why, right? What happens is, right? In this case, in this case, the idea is that the feature maps are already good, right? Because there's already, you know, a pre-trained network. The fine tuning is is very is done very little fine tuning is all that happens. You're not see I mean here what I'm saying is this is just a just a fine tuning. I mean even the learning rate is very low. They don't want to do see too much because it already works well. And as long as it works on your set of object classes, they are fine with it. Right? They are not they are not they are not they are not going to reuse this network back in the ImageNet or something, right? This network they want to use for their problem. And what they've done is they've just just taken a taken a pre-trained whatever a VGG net in this case. 
fine tuned it right end to end but then with a slow learning rate so that right you do not really churn all the weights and all you do not want to make right you know too many changes. And most cases right this is not the only time I mean right many times people do that I mean you, know, you just take the feature map that is already been learned you know through a sort of you know uh, through a good sort of uh, this one a representation. But then if you are talking about continual learning at all this is not continual right. Continual learning at all if you say right then there uh, then there, uh, there are issues and in the sense that I have already learned with some n object classes now I want 5 new object classes to come in. Right, and then and then you know, and then you know, I do not want to retrain, uh, I do not want to retrain with respect to the old classes, maybe I do not even have those examples with me and then I just have these, have these you know few new classes that I want to throw in, but then when I train this it should not happen that it starts forgetting what the other n were right. Those kind of things, are, but here it is not it is not that complex at all, I mean just a simple case just take the take the feature representation already know that it works very well right, it has been used for so many other 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 problems just just using it for for this problem and in fact in most cases these object class these objects are far fewer in number right it is not like it is not 1000 or it is far fewer in number ok. Maybe you let me know what exactly you mean by this negative transfer learning right and then maybe may, maybe right ok then we can think about it ok. So, that is what this fast RCNN is right alright. So, then ROI pooling right max pool within each grid cell so that so that you get a, you get a kind of you know constant size feature map that you can then use. Mm -hmm.